Hello, in today's video we're going to focus on the normal distribution. The normal distribution is one of the continuous random variables that is very important in statistical inferences. It is important especially because most real-life situations involving continuous random variables always follow closely the normal distribution. Because of this, it is very difficult for you to write a statistics exam without coming across a question involving the normal distribution. In this video in particular, we are going to look at the best exam practice. That means the tips and tricks that you'll be using when you come across a question involving the normal distribution. Before we dive into that, it is important to consider some important aspects of the distribution, especially its main characteristics, because they will be important for you to understand all what will be happening in the course of the lesson. So I implore your indulgence to be patient and follow up this video till the end so that you don't miss any of the tips and tricks that are involved in questions involving the normal distribution. Now, the probability density function f of x of the normal distribution is in such a way that its curve is bell-shaped you can see the shape of the curve it is in the form of a bell and it is continuous another most important thing about the normal distribution is the fact that it is unimodal so this line of symmetry corresponds to the mode and the distribution is in such a way that the median the mode and the mean coincide so this line of symmetry would be denoted in most of the diagrams that we'll be seeing as mu the mean of the distribution now, since the normal distribution is a continuous random variable, it can only measure values in ranges. And the probability that the random variable can take a value within a given range, A to B for instance, the probability that the random variable lies in that interval is simply given by the area enclosed by the curve in that interval, just like for any other continuous random variable. And this area is calculated by integration integrating from the lower limit to the upper limit of the probability density function with respect to x. Since we calculate the probability values by integration, the boundaries of the interval in which the random variable lies are not important. And that is why p of a less than or equal to x less than or equal to b would still be equal to the integral from a to b of f of x dx p of x less than a would still be equal to p of x less than or equal to a and is equal to the integral from negative infinity to a of f of x dx since the lower boundary of the domain of the curve is negative infinity. The next thing we look at is the probability density function that is supposed to be integrated to obtain probability values. The probability density function f of x of the normal distribution is 1 all over sigma the square root of 2 pi e to the x minus mu all squared divided by 2 sigma squared. You can see that it is quite a complicated function and it will not be easy to integrate it using analytical methods. And hence to do calculations here we have to use the standard normal distribution. The standard normal distribution with the variable z also follows the normal distribution with mean 0 and the standard deviation 1. The standard normal distribution is also in such a way that the cumulative probability values of its random variable can easily be calculated and in fact these have been calculated and presented on tables called standard normal tables. It is from these tables that we can easily calculate the probability values for the normal distribution since it is not possible to integrate its probability density function in order to get those probabilities. Now before you have to use the standard normal tables to calculate probability values for the normal distribution, you would have to convert the normal variable x into the standard normal variable z and this process is called standardization. The formula that is used is z equals x minus mu the mean of the distribution divided by sigma the standard deviation of the distribution now before we proceed it's important to interpret what the z score stands for x minus mu actually means the distance from the mean to the observation x and when you divide by sigma the standard deviation then you are converting that distance into standard deviation units and so any z score would tell you the number of standard deviations that your observation is away from the mean of the distribution so if a z score is to the right of the distribution for instance one it means the observation x that corresponds to that z score 
is one unit one standard deviation away from the mean to the right and so that score is greater than the mean when i have a z score of negative one instead it means the observation of my distribution that gave that z score is to the left of the uh, uh, mean of the distribution and so it is less than it so we move to the standard normal tables now as already mentioned the standard normal tables have cumulative probability values of the random variable z and uh, the cumulative probability density function used to get these probability values is denoted phi of z and it represents integral from negative infinity up to that particular z value of f of z its probability density function dz since f of z is not easy to integrate we now make use of the cumulative probability values suppose i have this standard normal curve with the variable z and the mean zero if my z value is here then phi of z is this area all of it so phi of z is always the area to the left of the z value itself so as already said uh, phi of z always includes the area to the left of that z value and not the one to the right okay now we have emphasized that for you to go to the standard normal table you need to have the probability that you are calculating involving phi and this phi of a particular value let's take this case phi of a that means the z value a the probability that uh, z is less than a so p of z less than a is simply phi of a which we can now go to the table so before you go to the standard normal tables make sure that you have your probability of z less than a value rather than greater than a value the probability of z less than a value gives the area to the left of a and which corresponds to phi of a the table only has phi of the particular value that you are going there to find so take note now in order to get other probabilities where it is the area to the right that might be required for instance we might be required to calculate the probability that z is greater than a in that case this unshaded area p of z greater than a is what it represents and we know that from the characteristics of the standard normal uh, distribution the total area enclosed by the curve must be one so we expect that p of z greater than a the unshaded area there plus the shaded area phi of a must be equal to one and so to have p of z greater than a you would need to take one minus phi of a which will now give you the required result here is a list of all the relationships between probability values and phi which you can always use each time you are in the exam to save time i will try to show you how each of them comes about because it's also important so that in case you are forgetting the exam you can always uh, derive it yourself for the first one p of z less than a equals phi of a since the p of z less than a is simply the area to the left of a which corresponds to phi of a the second one p of z greater than a is the area to the right of a and we have said that the area to the left of a plus the area to the right of a would always give one so p of z greater than a the area to the right of a is simply one minus the area to the uh, left of a which is phi of a p of z greater than negative a is equal to phi of a so how is this possible to visualize what is happening i will draw two graphs and then be able to see what is happening so the variable here is the standard uh, normal variable and uh, the line of symmetry in both cases corresponds to the mean of z which is usually zero so if z equals a and a is negative then a lies to the left of uh, the mean zero so negative a would be here p of z greater than a is then the area to the right of negative a and by symmetry of the graph positive a would be that way and the area to the left of positive a is actually identical to the one on the right of negative a so from here we can see that this one is phi of a that is the area to the left of positive a but as we have said by symmetry this area to the right of negative a is also phi of a 
by symmetry of the graph. So we can say that P of Z greater than negative A equals P of Z less than A, which then gives you phi of A. Since P of Z less than A is phi of A, which we can now go to the standard normal tables and we read uh, phi of A, the value of the probability we are looking for. Now the relationship number four, we have P of Z less than negative A equals one minus phi of A. So P of Z less than negative A, negative A is to the left of zero. We are talking of this shaded area representing the probability. And uh, if we go to the case of positive A, the area to the right of positive A also corresponds to the area to the left of negative A by the symmetry of the standard uh, normal curve. And so we can put that P of Z less than negative A is the same as P of Z greater than positive A. And uh, the probability of Z greater than A, which is the area to the right, is equal to 1 minus the area to the left, which is now phi of A. And that is why P of Z less than negative A corresponds to 1 minus phi of A. Now, the area to the left of negative A corresponds to phi of negative A. So we have that phi of negative A would always be 1 minus phi of A. It's another important relationship to take note of. So we can see that uh, for relationship 4, P of Z less than negative A would always be equal to 1 minus phi of A. And from that relationship, we are concluding also that phi of negative A would always be equal to 1 minus phi of uh, A. In relationship number 5, P of A less than Z less than B equals phi of B minus phi of A. Now, A and B, if they are positive, then that area would be here where A is less than B. And then the area will be this shaded uh, region, which corresponds to the probability that Z lies between A and B. And in fact, this one is easy to visualize. So P of uh, A less than Z less than B would simply be the area to the left of B minus the area to the left of A, which then gives uh, phi of B minus phi of A. For formula number six, we have P of negative A less than Z less than negative B equals phi of A minus phi of B. To demonstrate that, we have the standard normal curve, line of symmetry at zero. And uh, since the two boundaries are negative, we'll be talking of negative A and then negative B. The area then should be this one shaded. It represents the probability that is required that uh, Z lies between negative A and negative B. Now by symmetry again, negative B is the same distance from O as B to the right, while negative A is the same distance from O as A to the right. And so the area between negative A and negative B is equal to the area between positive B and positive A. So P of uh, negative A less than Z less than negative B should be equal to p of b less than z less than a and as we already saw in the previous case this is simply the area to the left of a minus the area to the left of a b so it gives us phi of a minus phi of b and uh, it corresponds to the relationship we have just seen in uh, number six above for relationship number seven, we have P of uh, negative A less than Z less than B, which corresponds to phi of A plus phi of B minus one. And uh, if we have our normal standard curve, line of symmetry at zero, we have the boundary with negative A to the left of uh, zero and B to the right of zero. And so the required area is this one shaded corresponds to the probability that z lies between negative a and b again just like in the other intervals between two values we'll take the area to the left of b minus the area to the left of negative a so we have p of uh, negative a less than z less than b being equal to phi of b minus phi of negative a area to the left of b minus area to the left of negative a 
and uh, we have then that phi of b minus the area to the left of negative a corresponds to the area to the right of positive a and so that area corresponds to 1 minus phi of a and from there we can simplify by expanding the negative sign here so that we get phi of b minus 1 plus phi of a which corresponds to phi of a plus phi of b minus 1 as uh, the relationship number 7 indicated for relationship number 8 we have p of uh, absolute value of z is less than a equals 2 times phi of a minus 1 actually we know that absolute value of z is less than a implies that uh, negative a is less than z less than a and so p of z absolute less than a corresponds to p of negative a less than z less than a which already as we saw above should be phi of a plus phi of a minus one because this is actually a special case of a relationship seven where the upper limit is uh, positive a so b replacing b by positive a we can just go straight to this relationship which finally gives us twice phi of a minus one as required for relationship nine z magnitude greater than a actually implies either z is less than negative a or z is greater than positive a and so the probability that z absolute value of z is greater than a would be the probability that z is less than negative a or z is greater than positive a and these are mutually exclusive events so we just have that p of z is less than negative a plus p of z greater than a would give us that probability value p of z less than negative a is a uh, 1 minus phi of a plus p of z greater than a is t1 minus phi of a and so overall we have 1 minus phi of a added twice so we have 2 into 1 minus phi of a as the relationship that can be used to find the probability that absolute value of z is greater than a we can come up with another possibility where we have to find the probability that uh, z is less than a or z is greater than b then again it has to do with mutually exclusive uh, events so we have p of uh, z less than a plus p of z greater than b and uh, in the case where a and b are both positive we just have phi of a plus one minus phi of b so we can have another relationship uh, p of z less than a or z greater than b following the result here it will be phi of a minus phi of b plus one so having learned all the tricks that are involved in always making sure that we have the area to the left of a particular z score before coming to the table you can see here the table has still emphasized that uh, phi of z corresponds to the cumulative probability of that z score the table also contains only positive values of z so here this table has specified that when you need uh, the probability of having a negative z score then you would have to take one minus uh, phi of z the next important thing about the table is that it's divided into sections. We first have the body of the table encircled here and it contains cumulative probability values pertaining to specific uh, Z scores. Now each of these values of probability are given to four decimal places and uh, the main characteristic about them is that they are greater than or equal to 0 0.5 for the main reason that it is only the positive z values that have been presented on the table. Since generally as you can see on this diagram, phi of a z value that is positive 
would always give you a value greater than 0 0.5 you can see the shaded region covers more than half of uh, uh, the area enclosed by the curve so if there were negative z values presented on the table that is when you could have uh, probability values less than 0 0.5 this other section of the table contains whole numbers but they are not actually whole numbers they are the differences between probability values when you have to add the third decimal place to your z-score so actually each of those numbers represents a probability of the other p all over 10,000 so it actually represents the differences in probability uh, given also to four decimal places but surely because of space they just put them as whole numbers but they actually represent p over 10,000 so a value of 12 in that region actually is 12 all over 10,000 which corresponds to 0 0.00112 and a value of 5 in that region again corresponds to 5 all over 10,000 which gives 0 0.0005 that is how you'll be reading values in that other far right section of the table now we look at how we can use the table to actually get probability values the first thing is that there is the first column of the table which actually contains the z value and the first decimal place of that z value while the top row represents the second decimal place and the row on the far right represents where you can obtain the third decimal place of your z score now suppose i want to find phi of 1.57 I would first locate 1.5 on the first column and then locate 7 at the top row from where I now follow up those columns and the rows to see where they intersect where they intersect it will give me the probability value for the z-score of uh, 1.57 on the first column I'm first locating 1.5 which is here and then at the top row i would locate seven my second decimal place from there now i follow up the row and the column that contain those values at their intersection is my probability value or the cumulative probability value that corresponds to uh, the z score of 1.57 so that value is 0 0.9418 now the majority of your calculations in the exam you will be standardizing and leaving your z score to two decimal places but if there is the need to have more accuracy if you decide to add the third decimal place then you could have a situation where you need to find the probability value corresponding to a z score of uh, 1.576 in that case, I will first follow the procedure to get the Z, the Z score first of uh, the first two decimal places, which we are just from getting as uh, 0 0.9418. And from there now, I'll go to the add section of the table and obtain the probability difference corresponding to the third decimal place being a 6. So to do that, I locate 6 on that uh, top row of the add section and then follow the column down to where it would intersect again with my target probability value that i had for the first two decimal places and uh, that corresponds to seven and since we said the exact value of the probability in that region corresponding to seven is seven all over ten thousand which corresponds to zero point zero 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 seven and upon adding we have zero point nine four two five as the value of the probability for the z score 1.576 and you can notice that there is not much difference between the two values and that is why during the exam leaving your z score to two decimal places would not affect your accuracy that much so before we go to a concrete example we take another case of finding as a probability value for a given z score suppose my z score is 0 0.53 i would again locate 0 0.5 as the first decimal place on the first column of the table and then the second decimal place at the top row which is 3 where they would intersect I will read my probability value which corresponds to 0 0.7019
if I needed to find phi of uh, 1.258, I would start by looking at the cumulative probability value corresponding to a z-score of 1.25. That means consider your z-score first to two decimal places and locate the probability value before going to the add section for the third decimal place 8. So I will start by locating 1.2 on the first column where my z-score is and then 5 on the top row where the second decimal place should be located and actually the two in the row and the column intersect where we have the value 0 0.8 8944. I will now have to add the difference that corresponds to 8, which is the third decimal place. So I locate 8 at the top of far right there, and from there I go down until the level of the column where I have read the probability value corresponding to the first two decimal places, and it actually corresponds on that row to a difference of 15 as i already said we have to divide that 15 by 10,000 to have the probability value corresponding to that difference which is 0 0.0015 so that we get uh, 0 0.8959 as the probability value for that z score okay to concretize all what we have learned in this video we are going to look at this question it says the time taken for a paper boy to deliver his papers is normally distributed with mean 52 minutes and standard deviation 6.5 uh, minutes. Find the probability that on a given day the paper boy takes uh, a longer than one hour to deliver, b fewer than 40 minutes to deliver, c between 45 and 58 minutes to deliver. So this is a typical exam question involving the normal distribution. The first thing to do would be to define the random variable x is the time taken to deliver the papers. So that x follows the normal distribution with parameters 52 and uh, 6.5 squared. So we have the first value being the mean and the second value being the variance in the notation. And in the A part now, we are looking for the case where the paper boy will take longer than one hour to deliver the papers. So it is P of X greater than uh, one hour. And since we are dealing with minutes, we should be talking of P of X greater than 60 minutes. The first thing I will do now is to standardize my value, which would now be converted into a Z score being greater than 60 minus the mean which is 42 all over the standard deviation which is 6.5 this corresponds to p of z greater than approximately 1.23 to two decimal places and the p of z greater than 1.23 represents the area to the right of 1.23 which we can obtain by subtracting the area to the left of 1.23 as we already saw in the manipulations so this corresponds to 1 minus phi of 1.23 and from there now i can go to the standard normal tables and read the cumulative probability value that corresponds to 1.23 okay here is the table the first thing is to go to the first column and locate first the z value with the first decimal place which is 1.2 and uh, this is 1.2 and then go to the top and look at the second decimal place which is uh, 3 where they would intersect will be here and that value corresponds to 0 0.8907 we then have that p of x greater than 60 would be equal to 1 minus 0 0.8907 which gives 0 0.1093 that's the probability value to four decimal places in the b part we are asked to find the probability that fewer than 40 minutes 
would be taken to deliver by the boy. So this is talking about p of x, the random variable, less than 40. And uh, again, before we go to the standard normal tables, we have to standardize our value by taking p of z less than the x value which is 40 minus the mean which is 52 all over the standard deviation 6.5 and this gives p of z less than negative 1.85 to two decimal places we already saw in the analysis so phi of negative 1.85 represents the area to the left of this negative value which by the symmetry of the curve is equal to the area to the right of positive 1.85 so that area to the right is simply obtained by taking 1 minus phi of the positive z value which is 1.85 and we can now go to the table and read that value so that we can calculate our probability to read the cumulative probability value corresponding to 1.85, I will first locate 1.8 on the first column and then 5 at the top row and uh, where they would intersect will be at this value which corresponds to 0 0.9678. So we have minus 0 0.9678 which gives 0 0.0322 as the probability value for the case where the time of delivery is less than 40 minutes. In the C part of the question, we are asked to calculate the probability that the delivery time would lie between 45 and 58 minutes. So in C, we are talking of P of uh, 45 less than X less than uh, 58. And again, to be able to do the calculation, we start by standardizing. So we'll be having P of uh, 45 minus the mean, which is 42, all over the standard deviation, which is 6.5, should be less than Z, which is less than the standardization of 58, which is done by 58 minus the mean, 52, all over the standard deviation, 6.5. P of negative 1.08 should be less than z less than 0 0.92 this becomes phi of 0 0.92 that means the area to the left of 0 0.92 minus phi of negative 1.08 which corresponds to the area to the left of negative 1.08 and since this one to the right is 1 minus phi of 1.08 we have our final result to be phi of 0 0.92 plus phi of 1.08 minus 1 the z score of 0 0.92 will first locate 0 0.9 on the first column of the table and then two on the first row at the top so that where they would intersect would be at this value which is 0 0.8212 so we have 0 0.8212 plus we read the probability value from the table again corresponding to a z-score of 1.08 we first locate the number and uh, the first decimal place 1.0 is here and then the second decimal place which is 8 when you follow up the row that has that value and the column that has the second decimal place we have the value 0 0.8599 so we complete our solution 0 0.8 599 minus 1 so that we then have p of uh, 45 less than x less than 58 being equal to 0 0.6811 to four decimal places
here we come to the end of uh, this first part of the normal distribution where we focus mainly on the tips and tricks that you can use to answer questions under the normal distribution in the second part which is the most important we'll be focusing mainly on the inverse phi function the standardization that means situations where they will give you the probability value and you would have to read the z score corresponding to that value such questions are usually most challenging and that's where students find difficulties so make sure you do not miss that second video which would involve the standardization